I made the big stove purchase, so I'm gonna show you. It's not the blue stove, but I'm really happy with the stove that it is. Well friends, I can't believe it. We have some major, big mega mama custom kitchen updates going on. While we were in Florida, our new builder was able to do pretty much all of phase one. Uh, there's a few small things the plumbers have to come back and do. But right now we're to the, we can't do anything else until our inspections tomorrow. So tomorrow the building inspector's coming out and they are going to be inspecting these floor joists. They are also inspecting the plumbing and they are inspecting the electrical, how Travis has it up to this point. But last time I did a garage video for you guys, there was nothing going on in here and now there's stuff going on. So I feel like, where do I begin? Where do I begin? So one thing, we have windows. That is my wall of windows over there. I will show you it from the outside. It is so much better even than I had in my head. There is our window by our door and there is our set of other glass doors. So. Only way I think I can do this for you is to vlog it. So I'm gonna take my camera, take you around, and, and talking hand will show us things. I made the big stove purchase, so I'm gonna show you. It's not the blue stove, but I'm really happy with the stove that it is. So the big stove reveal will be coming up as well. Okay, so you see I'm walking on these floors, and this is one of the things I had shared. We wanted to make the floor out here in the kitchen level with the floor for the rest of the house we are going to a lot of this trim will be taken off it's going to be a different door like another all glass door and the floors will match we will also in future renovation stages there's going to be new floors in the house and basically we're making the whole house a brand new house just one step at a time and we're starting getting a, a, a functional Mega Mama kitchen. So here you will see we have our new door going to the back of the property, insulation around the top, and our stonemason needs to come out to do some things, I believe on the outside. And we don't have like the knob set in yet, but it's there, it's a door. And the other thing is a vapor barrier under the floor joists and then there's going to be insulation, uh, but we're not that far yet. Well, it's framed around the outside again. Look at my floor joists, but those were, those were a huge thing to get done. And then the other thing the builder got done, ooh, let's not fall over things, JMRL, uh, before I talk to you about electrical and plumbing. Because again, I was trying to think, you know, in this design that I made up in my head, what could I put where garage doors were? And I'm like, well, it just makes sense to have windows. And so my vision is to have a very nice couch here because I like couches, they're cozy. And we're gonna have a mama chair and a stool and some kind of lamp. And it's just gonna be a really nice cozy area. Also over here, there's our other window. Now this is not the, what is it called? Hmm. The special kind of glass that by our code has to be, if you have a window by a door, it has to be this kind of window. I can't pull it up. I know I said it in other, is it, oh, tempered. Tempered, yay, <laughs> a quiz in my head. This window is just a placeholder. That window has been ordered. We're supposed to have it in April and it's required. So there we go for the meantime. Then we have these doors. Now, if I wanted the doors with the little crisscross applesauce window panes there, those, it's so silly, those have to be special ordered right now. Um, but these were there and we could order it, buy it that day, have it delivered the next day, and that's what we had done. Some of you have asked about, because with these, you can also get them where they have uh, the window shades inside and you can open and close them. But here's what convinced me not to do that. 
So what convinced me not to do that was the sample set that was there at Lowe's, they're held on by a magnet inside. And so you open and close them and it's a magnet and you can raise them up or raise them down. Well, the magnet was broken, one of them. And I'm like, I don't wanna deal with that. Maybe it doesn't happen to most folks. Maybe it's a rarity, that's all cool. But just like if it's something else that can break, that's okay. And I like things wide open. I like a lot of glass. I love a lot of windows. You know, everywhere I can in here, that's not an open door. I'm going to have big stained glass windows. I love to see outside and I, no, no one can see us inside back here where we're tucked. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, but that broken magnet that was on display talked me out of buying those. Anyway, there you go. There's my little poem. Alrighty, and then, hey, some random mud boots. We have uh, weather report 60 some degrees today. So I'll show you how things are looking outside. Okay, so here are how things are looking. That trash can will no longer live there once this is done. It is only there because we're used to having it there and this was a garage, but I'm really happy with how it's looking on the outside. It no longer looks like a garage to me anymore. It's really starting to pull together. We're gonna have a porch that's level with that step going all the way across as well. So like big flower pots and such. Uh, but that's how it's looking and I'm pretty excited about it. So then the other thing that the new builder did is these windows around here are brand new. Um, and those windows also, another exciting thing. So of course, on these walls, there's gonna be, I think it's the furrowing strips, there's gonna be insulation, there's gonna be electrical. Uh, the plumbing, you see, that's the only plumbing that's uh, mostly going through the floor. Also, yes, I'm getting a pot filler, that's what that is, yay. But anyway, when these windows are done, they're gonna be built out several inches. So glory of glory, um, a delight of my heart. <laughs> these windows are going to have very deep window sills. And I'm so excited because this is a good uh, sunshine part of the house. We should be able to have great light for plants there. Again, super excited about that. And then this is gonna be my kitchen sink window. And I'll be looking directly out. I mean, it's a mess right now and kids are playing in the wind, but we've got a massive play yard and our pool and all our bike storage and then a hay field and all of that is just gonna be right out my window here. Okay, so then uh, the next thing, I'm jumping over to the pot filler. So it was a big decision yesterday. He came in, he wanted to see like my biggest pot and he was trying to see from the top of the stove how many inches high should the pot filler be. And of course I'm down on the floor now. So I've got to stand up some more inches. Anyway, I believe this is gonna be 24 inches from the top of my stove which was still several inches taller above my biggest pot. Of, and my biggest one is a 22 quart stock pot. And I think if I go into a um, bigger pot, but anyway, I feel like that'll be good because it was several inches. Sorry, my battery died, so that's why you get Jamrail stand in a different place. I feel like that's good. He said that they can go all the way. He's seen them to 36 inches. And I'm just looking at that and I'm like, I think we're good. Okay, he checked biggest pot. We still have several inches above my biggest pot. Okay, so it's just like, I'm going in circles saying that. I feel like there'll be questions. I'm not sure the questions though. Felt like a big decision yesterday, but we measured and I know they can make adjustments if there would be some terrible thing that we would find out. So I'm gonna flip this around and show you some more plumbing. Okay, so. The plumbing goes all the way, it goes into the basement over there. And right here, this is gonna be the sink on the island and the garbage disposal. So yay for that. Also, Travis is working with all the wires and all like where the outlets will be on the island. And uh, you all have asked me some great thoughts about where I'm plugging things in and we're, we're really thinking hard on that. So that's great. Uh, there's the water that goes to the pot filler. And then over here, this is where 
the big sink will be, yay. So many of you have asked questions about the electrical, so I will pull Travis over. He's over with some kids right now and uh, grill him on some electrical questions. But I know several of you have had some great electrical questions as well. Now Travis worked as a licensed electrician for decades, for a nice long time. He's been home full time since 2012, but he can still do our electrical. We have planned this out and even yesterday when we were talking about the different outlets for the island, and I got to thinking and we were brainstorming where do I see myself putting different appliances and things we are having outlets on the island especially if we're having like a big family gathering and maybe other people are bringing slow cookers and dips and things I mean I'm gonna need to use my mixer there's gonna be many things I'll need to plug in the island but I don't see myself like if I'm having a big cooking day and let's say I've got three or four slow cookers going and two electric pressure cookers and a bread machine or two or three uh, and maybe futuristically a freeze dryer that's another topic if I have all that going on I do not see myself in my head I don't see the island for all of that the island is again it's gonna have outlets we were placing them putting them on the drawing yesterday but I don't see all of those appliances on the island. I see the island as a prep space, a workspace, um, even a serving space and a family buffet space because we're going to have two long sides with the overhangs for eating that are supposed to get nine or more people around. And then of course there's going to be a prep sink here too. And I want to be able to use my mixer and probably some small appliances. I mean maybe you'll finally get me using a food processor or something, right? But I just don't see, you know, pretending to use this kitchen using all my other small appliances on that space. Where I see myself using them, so let's see if I can point back here. Okay, I'm gonna have to turn around. Turn around, dream with me. Place these outlets. <laughs> Okay, so where I see myself um, using the small appliances, and again, I don't mind using my countertops. I don't know what else to use them for. Like to me, countertops are a workspace just as well as an island. I've never had an island, uh, but I have certainly used small space countertops, and even at the forest house, I had a lot of space on the countertops, and I would just line them up. Um, so my goal is not clear countertops because I want to actually be able to use it. So right here, um, and back to the electrical. So the refrigerator, I'm pretty sure if I'm re remembering right, is gonna be on its own circuit. Travis is doing a sub panel just for this kitchen. So there's gonna be no problem in powering all the things that need to be powered. But it's a big commercial refrigerator, it's gonna be there. It's gonna end before the window. And so basically, this space of the window, which is a couple feet, is gonna be available. And then on the other side of the stove, that whole corner coming up to this window is gonna be available. So this is really these two areas. Now I'm also gonna have countertop from the other side of this window all the way down. And I think we did it last time, it was like 21 some feet. So there's gonna be a lot of countertop, but I'm planning like right here under this window, I could have two bread machines going. Right here in this corner, I could have two or three slow cookers going or my pressure cookers. And I'll also have this area up here to have stuff. We're gonna have the coffee maker that I use every day and then the electric tea kettle that the kids use every day for either hot chocolate or tea in various forms right there. And then, da da da, next plan, okay. So you see here in our first pictures, this is when the garage was full of Travis's stuff, more like for a storage facility. Uh, as he said, again, not big enough to be his hopes and dreams garage. And we did not buy this house with the idea that uh, this garage was where, was his working garage right up on the house like that. So anywho, and you can watch my other videos I share in the first one and the second one, probably the third and fourth one, why we decided to jump in and do this kitchen now. So you can go through the garage to kitchen conversion playlist and listen to all of those tales. Then we went ahead and we got every Everything out of the garage and we got the freezers and the refrigerators on the front porch uh, and within all that we were learning that hey it's great to get everything cleared out and ready but now we play the waiting game for the permits and then we got all the permits and now all those I's dotted and all those T's crossed 
And then we were making our plans with our builder and we also wanted to go ahead and start ordering a lot of the things that we would need because we know the state of the world and with ordering things right now and just how, you know, some, some things you order in June and you get the next January and just not sure. So we went ahead and ordered a bunch of stuff and also brought home several things like our new lights and uh, then things started coming like our custom hood I thought might take months. We already got that. That's in our storage pod. Uh, the cabinets are being held at Lowe's. Many of the appliances have come in and they are holding those for us as well. Um, with the weather, I'm kind of taking a gamble on still not having all of those things delivered yet as long as I can hold off because uh, I just don't want them to get damaged in the pod either. It is warming up, so we'll see if that's gonna happen here in the coming days. And then you can see as they started to do the, um, the floor joist and get those going, and then they framed out for the front door and then the windows, and then they got those added. And now we have the plumbing uh, mostly done here and things are moving along. So I kind of feel like we're a, we're a slow moving train, but we are having forward movement right now, which is super exciting. So like everybody else in the universe, I have been reading about and researching, I'm still in the research phase, looking into those home freeze dryers. And if I get one, I'd want to get the large. What I've been reading about the large is they really need their own circuit and you need to look into ventilation. A couple reasons why I haven't ordered yet, but mainly I needed to talk that out with Travis. Like, okay, if I get one of these big honking freeze dryers, uh, it needs its own circuit. So I guess we need to plan that in the kitchen remodel and I don't even have the machine yet. But part of what I've been reading as well is that they're like eight to 10 weeks out once you order them. Uh, and then there's some different pump options and such. I asked on Instagram and Facebook for folks to share their experiences with the home freeze dryers and I've got a whole bunch of great feedback. A lot of people told me other YouTube channels to watch and that is cool and I have been watching those. I just like to hear from a wide variety of experiences, YouTube, mom at home, people just on Instagram. So if you are looking for some information on uh, getting started doing home freeze drying as well, you can look for either of those posts of mine and you'll just see a good variety of feedback. People who've had fantastic experiences, people who've had middle of the road or not fantastic experiences. It's just with such a big investment and such a big machine, it's good to look at all the angles. So, that being said, in the planning of the electrical in this kitchen, we were already rearranging some of the things and some of the circuits so that if I get one of these large home freeze dryers and it's running pretty much every day, <laughs> uh, it, it needs its own dedicated circuit. Where's that gonna be and where am I gonna put it? So let me show you my thoughts on that. And these are my outside shoes, mm -hmm. Walmart specials. So, and sometimes I find myself going out in public with them, which they really would be fine for public, but you know, uh, yeah, homesteading shoes, haha. -ha. So I don't want to wear them out in public, okay. The plan has been, which is good to like, <laughs> talk about these plans as we go, right? The plan has been that the countertop would stop at this window, okay? If I'm doing a home freeze dryer, where's it gonna go? This is a big honking machine. And you guys can certainly let me know if you have any different thoughts. The requirements are though, it has to be within this room, okay? <laughs> My thought is, well, what if we just extended the countertop like halfway between that window or even to the end and we put the freeze dryer there? Yes, it's gonna block part of that window, but welcome to the jungle freeze dryer. This is the space I have for you. There you go, that's my thought. Um, it would require probably purchasing two more cabinet sets and bring the countertop on down a little bit. And I'm just thinking, well, instead of having the countertop halfway, let's just do it to the end of the window because that way, you know, I'm gonna be stacking trays and doing things. Other side here, like I said, I'm planning coffee pot, tea kettle, which those could be moved around. I mean, but again, we're like making electrical plug decisions. And then somewhere up here, our microwave is going to be. This is, again, this is a total like JMRL. This is a, an, an additional thing 
But again, I wouldn't, I'm glad to think of it now <laughs> and not get all done and then be like, okay, great, where do I put this huge freeze dryer? Now, some people like Jessica at Three Rivers Homestead, I have seen she has her freeze dryer on a cart and she has moved some things around to make more room for it. Um, she actually, I was reading the other day or I heard her say one of these things, they got rid of a freezer to make room for the freeze dryer. Anyway, and I could put it in a different place in the house, but I'm trying to make, you know, make it in here where I'm doing things. I'm thinking that might be something that we do. Um, again, we're not to the cabinet stage yet, so I can certainly add on. And if we do it to the end of the window, again, Travis, where's your measuring tape? Um, might even end up being three more cabinet sections there. Priorities, I'd still have room for my chair here. I'd still have room for a couch. So there you go. So Travis and his planning is already planning that right here, there's going to be an outlet that is a 20 amp circuit and it's on its own and it is just for that freeze dryer. So then the island is going to have, I believe it is four electrical boxes, mainly on the working side of the island. I can't get it straight in my head to do outlets in the middle of the island. It just bothers me in my head, so there's just the honest truth. I don't want a bar popping up with outlets. I don't want outlet boxes where things can spill, um, but over here, I'm walking on the bare floor here. Oh, my phone's ringing, stop phone. So right here, if I'm standing here, this is gonna be like the working side of the island. Right here in front of me, we will have outlets facing us. Okay, it's also very, very, very windy here. And I wanna say for my mama head, the reason that uh, all the toys are spread out in our toy yard is besides the wind, we've had a bunch of snow and stuff gets spread around in the snow. There you go, that just checks the box for my mama like, I explained why the toys are everywhere. Cause we live here and kids are playing and there's snow and there's wind, yay. Okay, so we're gonna interview Mr. Travis. So tell us about this electrical. <clears throat> what do you wanna know? What, what do I wanna know? I don't know, they've had questions. If I have two pressure cookers and three slow cookers and two bread machines going in the area that I told you I would probably use the countertop for, am I gonna flip something? You should never have an instance where you plug in enough stuff to flip a breaker. And why is that? Because you, this whole thing is all receptacles. The, all 20 amp circuits. All 20 amp circuits. Yeah. So if you're asking electrical questions and you know these things, that might mean something to you. And there's a lot of them. And there's a lot of them. If under that window and in that corner, those are the areas I'm eyeballing to like have all those things going. I can have all those going at one time. I think there's only three receptacles on the one 20 amp circuit. And okay. Two on the other. Okay. And then there's going to be six here for the island. Okay. That are on separate, three different circuits. Three different circuits. Okay. Another dedicated circuit for the for around these windows here. Yeah. So and then eight. one for the freeze dryer that I may or may not. One for the freeze dryer, one dedicated for the microwave. Okay. Oh, uh, and what does the stove take? So the oven that I went with, stove, oven, whatever we want to call it, the burners up top are gas, yeah. but the oven is electric. It's a standard 50 amp circuit for the oven. So the oven just needs a standard 50 amp circuit. Okay. It gets number six wire. Okay, we need some number six wire. Okay, and then the refrigerator, is that on its own? It's on its own 20 amp circuit. Okay, so I got that All right. All by its lonesome. All by its lonesome. And then we're gonna have some outlets over here around my couch area. From behind you, all the way behind the windows, uh -huh. gonna be a couple. Gonna be a couple. And then, and then around our desk area, there's gonna be some. Yeah, and they're on their own circuit. And they're on their own circuit. Okay, anything else that people would like to know? What about the lights in the ceiling? What are those off of? They're gonna be on their own 20 amp circuit too. Okay. The flies are out, happy spring. Basically the whole, the whole 20 amp box is mm -hmm. gonna be filled with receptacles. Only, I think only two of them are for lights. All right, so hopefully that helps. What about the dishwashers? Did we talk about that? I know they're, they're, on, the they're on their beach. own. So, so we should have, if we the could do the, the Tim the Toolman noise, we should have more power in this kitchen so I'm not flipping breakers. Yeah, yeah. it be like a receptacle every two feet or something like okay. that. Okay, okay, this is good. So we're already talking about if I do the, the freeze dryer thing, 
again, like where's the trash can go, Jamerell? I don't know. Travis said, well, maybe we need to build on. So we're gonna measure again the refrigerator. I think there will be room for the trash can between this back door and the refrigerator, and that would be a lot. Oh, sorry, spring flies. That would be the logical space to put it. But let's confirm that. Oh, and the other thing they did. So we had a hose bib here, just like a outside a faucet that water could pour through. So they deleted that. That is no longer there. This is gonna be a wall of cabinets and also a built-in desk area. Okay, we're gonna get a Mr. Travis tour. The panel is gonna go here. This is getting deleted. Okay. So we got some stuff running on the floor for the oven. Okay. Uh, I need to put a receptacle outside for the pool. Okay. So we can permanently wire in the pool. Okay. By the way, yeah, getting some pool work done off of this sub panel too. Okay. And then I got receptacles. This one here is for the fridge. Okay. One over there is going to be for the corner receptacles. Okay. A lot of the stuff's going to run through the wall. Some of it I could run under the floor, so I'm trying to get that run now before they cover it up. Gotcha. They're putting insulation in this floor, right? Insulation in the floor, and they're insulating these pipes. Okay. And it'll be and insulated one, around that pipe. Yeah, and once the floor is built, then they can build the the walls against the block. There. Okay. Yeah, that was something um, our county up. said they had to. Yeah, the, the the walls get built on top of the floor, so well, that only makes sense. But who knew? Okay, and then you have wire going here. Yeah, that's for the island. I got okay. Four dedicated reception circuits for the island. Okay. Plus the one for the garbage disposal. Nice. I'm gonna run. I think maybe two more. Okay. I need to run one from the island to under the window here. Okay. I need to run one that goes the length here for. Um, the microwave mm -hmm. that I could run under, under the floor. Sounds good. Microwave's going to be again in that area. You know, I'm going to daisy chain underneath the door. Oh, and the windows okay. Daisy chaining. For some receptacles. Okay. Cross Hold on. We're going to we're going to learn something here. Yes, if we want to crawl space, you have to drill through every every floor door. Yeah, that's not fun. So the ones that don't that go just this way, mm -hmm. you only have to drill through the center support and so all of us nice. drilling. Nice. Yeah. I'm with that. I don't really want to run any crossways because right. it's too much drilling. I can run yeah. through the studs easier. I like it. I think all the people who know what you're talking about will like it too. And these lights here that you got off eBay, those are going. Yeah. Those are going to your shipping container. Right. Do you want to also tell the people that you don't feel sad because we're doing the kitchen first? No. No? Yeah, this was never big enough for my shop anyway, so. That's right. Might as well get some my good shop, use out of my it. Shop needs to be big enough to drive my truck. Yes. Drive the van. Mm hmm Tim Allen would be proud. More power. Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> run the lights here. Mm hmm And you know, I'll have to set boxes for all of them. Yeah. But they're nice lights. They're waiting for us. We'll get there. So next step, the inspector is coming tomorrow. And he's Something. gonna at some point. They wouldn't tell me morning or afternoon. That's right. And they're going to flip the switch on Thursday. That's always our Brian Regan joke. So at some point they're going to come. They're going to inspect it. And we'll see if there's anything else we need to do. And then the plumber was going to come back and do something else after that, wasn't he? Yeah, he has to do the pressure test. Okay. And he wanted to wait and do it while the inspectors were here. Oh, okay. Good. And then so they're all coordinated. They're going to insulate these pipes. Yeah. But there they are. Lots to do. All righty. Okay, so now I'm going to take you in the basement and show you what they did in the basement plumbing wise. All righty, so I see pipes coming out. It was possible. Yay. Is this whole white thing new or was yeah, this? They used that cutout that was existing into the floor. Okay. And they adapted to it. And so. Nice. This whole space here is going to be like a little mechanical room. Once we get to the basement renovation phase, we're going to have doors here and we'll walk through and this will be exactly like Travis said. And that hot water, did they come off the hot water in the shower down here that was already there? Yeah. Is that what I'm seeing? Is that, I mean, that's fine with me. Yeah, there you was know. some pipes here that they deleted that went to an old um, filter, I think. Okay. Well, all drains lead to the ocean. Uh -huh. so, so there we go up there. It runs along. They got a shut off here. Nice. For the cold and for the hot. Okay, yeah, he was telling me something about that, and I was thinking, I don't know what you're saying, but hopefully. There's one for the hot around the corner. Okay, very nice. Very nice. Good job, folks. Alrighty, so this is the drawing that we're going off of and that the county has approved. So let us have it. It just shows all your receptacles. So, freeze dryer, 
receptacles on the island. You just gotta follow the lines, kids. Uh, but anyway, we just measured, um, and this isn't our overall kitchen drawing. This is just focusing on the electrical. But I will say, we just measured again the refrigerator, and we do have, how was it 24 inches? Uh, 24 inches from the refrigerator and the door, and the door opens in this way um, to put the trash can there. So that's just what we're gonna have to do, because I think I need a freeze dryer now. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah we'll make it work. Alrighty, so for the big stove reveal, so you know I was I was looking at that one gas stove once I decided to go to gas. See, we, we have room to, to move around here and make adjustments. I was looking at that blue one, liked it a lot. Uh, then I was like, okay, that one is 48 inches, which is obviously a nice big stove, but we have 60 inches planned for that space. And I already had ordered and already have received a huge 60 inch custom hood. So I wonder if there's a big 60 inch gas stove. And so I found one. It's from uh, the company called Z-Line. That's the one I bought. And it's actually supposed to be here in seven days. So there was no waiting around for that one. I'll show you pictures of it. It is stainless steel, just like my other appliances. So I didn't get the pretty blue face on the front of it, but I am getting more burners, a bigger stove area. And uh, it still has the one smaller oven on one side, but by the dimensions, I'll still be able to use that for nine by 13 pans, which I do a lot of those. And then the main oven's a little bigger as well. Okay, again, so here's the beautiful cobalt blue blue stove that I really liked that was 48 inches uh, but not the one I'm going with now okay and here is the 60 inch nine burner stove it also comes with a griddle and all of that glorious stuff this is the one that I went with and now with all this wind I'm seeing the kids have, are getting their Christmas kites out <laughs> tis the season so anyway friends this is the progress on the kitchen I feel like hey things are happening so again tomorrow is the first set of inspections and then after that uh, some more with the plumbing and then a lot more for the electrical and then we will be regrouping with our builder man and talking out exactly, I guess just going down our little list there and naming everything that needs done for phase two. I will update you on that and we'll see if we can uh, get this show on the road and get a little closer to the kitchen. Thank you so much for watching all of these garage to kitchen conversion update videos. I will link the whole playlist here if you would like to watch my thought process and plans develop from the beginning, from going from we're gonna do a kitchen, I don't know what it's gonna look like, to feeling like I'm standing in here and now I wanna make room for an invisible freeze dryer. So thanks so much for watching. Leave any questions you have down in the comments below and I will also chat with you in those comments and I'll see you real soon with another brand new video. Bye-bye.